The greatest zombie movie ever made is the story about three friends who, can you guess, want to make the greatest zombie movie ever. <laughs> yeah, you never could guess that one. We ended up getting a digital copy of The Air Sea from Nat Galley, and I chose this one specifically for the nostalgia value. We never tried to make a zombie movie, but when we were in high school, we did do a couple of short films. I mean, do you remember that time that Luca injured himself when he was trying to dance on the bleachers? Oh yeah! I remember that one time that Aaron forgot the dance moves and just started making up his own. Things were so different back then. Good times. <laughs> anyway, the point is, is that we should be able to relate to it. But the thing is, the greatest zombie movie ever didn't exactly measure up to our expectations. For one thing, it doesn't really know who its audience is. And for another, the writing needs a lot of work. But first, the plot. Justin, Gabe, and Bobby are three friends who are tired of making subpar horror films. And rather than just, let's say, making a movie with an actual script, they decide to make the greatest zombie movie ever. Because zombies are cool, and how hard could it be? To complicate things further, they decide on a three weekend timeline for filming their three hour epic. Because once summer vacation hits, Gabe is leaving town. That means the three weekends to film, and one day to make the script. Sounds like a winner already. They host auditions and cast Justin's crush as the leading actress. They also cast the most charismatic and handsome guy in school as the leading male. That just leaves the problem of sets, budget, and props. They go to Justin's scheming grandmother and she gives them $5,000 with a 12% interest. Then they go to Bobby's ex-con, Uncle Clyde, for help making the zombie prosthetics. And then they're denied the chance to film in the school, which they eventually just break into. I have a bad feeling about this. Obviously, and this is not a spoiler, everything that can go wrong does go wrong and they don't end up making the greatest zombie movie ever. It wouldn't be a student film project if it didn't go horribly horribly wrong. The lead actress gets a piercing and it gets infected. Bobby, the sound guy, gets sick. Someone drops the camera. Their actors quit. Justin breaks an arm. And more shenanigans. And it all comes off as fairly predictable, but in that, you know, you're predicting that things are going to go wrong, but the things that do go wrong aren't weird enough that you're actually engaged. It's not Tommy Wiseau level problems, it's George Lucas level problems. I may have gone too far in a few places. Or maybe it's the writing style that doesn't exactly sell the plot. We just came off of reading Jesse Andrews' The Haters, and it seems as if Jeff Strand is going for the same kind of quirky, offbeat sense of humor, but only went about halfway because he was afraid he wasn't going to get the PG rating. I mean, for example, the boys cast Alicia as the leading actress because she's Justin's crush. So, you know, despite the fact that he is like an 8.5 on the sexually frustrated scale, he thinks about her very chastely. He doesn't imagine what it's like to make out with her, or go on a date with her, or any of those things that suggest that he is a 15 year old boy with 15 year old boy hormones. The jokes are all fairly tame as well. Like, this was written to pass the Soccer Mom Censorship Committee. Nope, kids don't do drugs, or have sex, or drink alcohol. The most they do is harmlessly break a few rules. Can't be too gritty. Nothing to see here. So not only does the story lack an element of realism, but a lot of the jokes also fall pretty flat. Like in this one scene where they're trying to film in this park, but there's this family that's having a birthday party and they've hired this clown and this clown just keeps popping up and saying the most random shit. Just to be a dick. And then there are the running gags that are funny for all the wrong reasons. The woman scowled. You should spend a little less time thinking about zombies and a little more time thinking about the Lord. You're with all these people thinking that liking horror movies means that you're going to go out into a park and sacrifice children or something. And then there are the jokes that are just set up wrong. Justin's mom was an overprotective parent in a lot of ways, but she didn't restrict his movie watching as long as he continued to demonstrate that he could tell the difference between fantasy and reality. Though she wasn't a fan of his enthusiasm for horror movies, she knew there were much worse things that he could be doing with his friends, like vandalism or treason. Characterization in the greatest zombie movie ever needs a lot of work. Female characters are so bland, they're practically objectified. 
like Alicia. It's not that Alicia is sexualized or a prize to be won, it's just that she's a plot placeholder. Hot crush goes here. To be fair, it's hard to say that any of the characters have a unique voice or are at all memorable. I mean, a lot of the conversations that take place are very short back and forth conversations that don't come with said Gabe or replied Bobby, so I have no idea who's talking half the time. They're very one-dimensional. Bobby is the dumb one, and I'm not really sure if dumb is the correct word. Gabe is the practical one, and Justin is the director. So picture the book starring Sam, Goyle, and Nicolas Cage. And why they didn't just decide to film this three-hour epic after summer vacation and they had to do it right this second, I can't even tell you. But with the flat character development and the PG sense of humor, this book reads like it should be directed at the 9-12 to 12 crowd, not a YA audience. I liked that this book was kind of directed at young filmmakers and encouraging them to follow their dreams. I like that it kind of sprung out of this YouTube DIY culture. But I think the best part of this book was the epilogue. <laughs> Except that I actually wasn't being sarcastic. The epilogue wrapped up the book very cutely, and it gave you some things that you did expect, and also some things that you didn't expect. It emphasized the, if at first you don't succeed, at least you live to fight another day type of moral. No, I don't think that was it. If at first you don't succeed, glitter to your enemies. No, not that one either. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, I'll gut you like a fish. Anyway, the greatest zombie movie ever would be great for a passionate kid reading at like a 10 year old reading level. For a YA audience, I don't think there's a lot there, humorously or otherwise. The characters read a little bit young and somewhat flat, and it's also hard to relate to these characters' decisions. So, FYI, you cannot make a feature film in three weekends on a budget of $5,000. It will not happen. I smell like dead fish. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Stinky the Clown. <laughs> I see my crazy eyes. I see my crazy eyes. I'm Stinky the Clown. Gaba, 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 gaba. I have a pet turtle named Barf. Woo, 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 woo. I'm Stinky the Clown, and soap is for the weak. Fadoodle. <laughs> Sorry, that was wrong. It's Fafa Durden. Wagga, 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 bop, doop.